number one. A small tank can drive underneath a larger tank. So to start off we have a very straightforward myth which obviously would be possible in real life if you have some kind of crazy small tank like one of the early wheeled armored cars and if you happen to have a massive German concept tank like the Ratte. But let's be realistic here, out of all the existing tanks I don't think you would be able to drive underneath a big tank since if you take the smallest tank that has ever been built which is the Badger, no no not that one yes that one and if you take one of the biggest tanks that have ever been built which is the mouse you can clearly see that there is no way for the badger to drive underneath a mouse but is that also the case in world of tanks well let's find out so to start off with this experiment we skimmed out every single tank in the game and we came into the conclusion that the tier 2 Polish premium tank destroyer the TKS-20 is the smallest and shortest tank in the entire game. So now we have the smallest possible tank, let's see what the biggest possible tank is. And with bigger I mean the tank with the biggest possible gap in between the tank's belly and the ground. So after some digging we chose the Type 5 Heavy, the OY and the SCRV 103B. And for the map it didn't really matter so we went out to Ensk to save us some time with driving. So here we are on Ensk with a portable engine, a Type 5 Heavy, an OI, an STRV and with quite a bunch of TKSs since the TKS is quite a fragile tank. So I guess we more than needed the spare TKSs. So at first we tried fitting the TKS under the Type 5 Heavy but even after a little push from our portable engine we didn't get any closer than the TKS sinking through the ground a little, which clearly means that with regular tanks it simply ain't gonna happen. But that's exactly why we took the STRV with us as well, because if the STRV uses its siege mode to fully elevate its tank, it creates a much bigger gap at the front for the TKS to go under, which might provide some extra leverage. So the STRV rises all the way up, the TKS gets into the position, gets a little push of the AMX and it seems like the TKS comes a little bit further but still after the TKS passes a certain point it starts to lose its HP and it essentially won't go any further. After that we tried it with another time but this time from the back but sadly no success either. So conclusion, we tried various different tactics but it seems like it simply isn't possible and the Watt physics system simply won't let us do it since the tank either starts glitching through the ground or dies instantly. So therefore I think it's pretty safe to say that this myth is busted. Myth number 2. A tank can go over 100 km per hour. So I guess most of you guys know that the tank with the fastest top speed in the game currently is the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, with a top speed of 79 km per hour, but that is still 21 km per hour away from the 100 mark. So could it be possible for a Rheinmetall Panzerwagen to go over 100 km per hour in World of Tanks? Well, let's find out. But before we're gonna start to get into the testing scenario, I bound a few rules to this myth which are that the speed must be achieved while the tank's tracks are still in contact with the ground and I can only use the help of the other tanks pushing me and driving downhill. So simply falling from a high cliff doesn't count since it's not actually achieving and sustaining the top speed. Even though the watt speedometer does measure the speed of a falling vehicle as well for some reason. So with all that cleared up, let's get right into the testing of this myth. So to start off we considered a lot of different maps to try this on but eventually it all came down to either El Halouf or Westfield. So we did a little pre-test on both maps and after those pre-tests we came to the conclusion that the hill on the El Halouf spawn provided the best boost. Since fair enough the hills on Westfield might be steeper and longer but the main issue with the Westfield hills was the fact that there were a lot of bumps in the terrain which would mess up the line of the other Rheinmetall Panzerwagens who were providing the extra horsepowers. So for the map El Halouf it is. Which brings me to the second part of the testing scenario which is the insane amount of extra horsepowers. Since we managed to create a train of 29 other Rheinmetall Panzerwagens to provide a whopping 31,900 extra horsepower. Which I know isn't realistic since the train will eventually break up anyways but you get the point we had a lot of extra horsepower. And that basically wraps up the testing scenario so let's dive right into the results. So so here we are at Hallelujah, me and my well-trusted Rheinmetall Panzerwagen together with my 29 portable engines and we start to line up at the top of the hill. So after waiting for the train to form, 
I counted down, we smashed down the gas and we're off at a top speed of already 85, 90, oh the hill goes flat again and we didn't manage to get up to speeds over 90 kilometers per hour. And the weird part is that the tank simply refuses to further accelerate at the 90 km per hour mark. Even after retesting it some more times off streams, I never managed to breach the 90 km per hour mark. But before I'm gonna take you guys to the conclusion of this myth, I have a little bonus test for you. Since we also tried the same thing with the slowest tank in the game, which of course can no other be than the Talk 2, to see how far we could push it. And to be honest, the results were absolutely insane. And I honestly could not believe my eyes. So, you know what? I'm just gonna show you my live reaction to this. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's see how fast we can go. Okay, so 21, 20. Oh, we're literally not going faster than this. 40! Oh my god! No way! 50! 70! Holy shit! 71 kilometers per hour! What the fuck? Holy fuck! I did not expect for a talk to go that fast. What the actual fuck? 72 kilometers per hour in a fucking talk. How? How is that even possible? Wow, can you believe it? Because honestly, I still can't believe that we reach a top speed of 73 kilometers per hour in a flipping talk too. Fair enough, it's still not 100 kilometers per hour and it's still far away from what we achieved with the Rhymes Up Hunter Wagon, but I still think it was definitely worth showing you guys. So now, with that little bonus clip out of the way, let's move on to the conclusion of this myth. So, conclusion. No, our testing has shown that it is impossible for a tank to go any faster than 90 km per hour while still touching the ground. So, I believe that Wargaming put some kind of speed cap in the game code to prevent tanks from going faster than 90 km per hour while driving on land. But on the other hand, you can go over 90 km per hour while falling. So, I don't know, did we do something wrong? Is there any better way to reach top speeds? Let me know in the comments down below and I might retest this myth in the future. But for now, the current test result speaks for itself, which means that for now this myth remains busted. Myth number 3. You can ammo rack a tank with a non-penetrating HE round. So here we are with yet another ammo rack related myth, but up until now every one of those myths got busted. But will this one be any different? Well, I highly doubt it, since ammo racks are most of the times, well, at least for the tank's sakes, I hope most of the times, situated inside of the actual tank. But as I stated in one of my previous Mythbusters episodes, in order for an ammo rack explosion to happen, the shell does need to be in contact with some form of an extreme temperature. So realistically, things like the heat of an engine fire, or the heat generated by kinetic energy of a penetrating AP round or the explosion of a penetrating HE round. But in this myth we are testing if the ammo rack can also blow up without the HE round actually going through the tank's armor. So I guess most of you already know that it's far from realistic that the heat from a splash explosion on the outside will be nowhere hot enough to ignite the gunpowder of the shell stored in the ammo rack inside of the tank. But is that also the case in World of Tanks? Well, let's find out. So for this experiment, I set it up as follows. So just like many of my other ammo rack related myths, I gathered a lot of T28 prototypes because of their weak ammo rack. Also in combination with some tanks to shoot the T28s and to damage their ammo racks beforehand. And at last, but definitely not least, me in my Lorraine 155.50. But why did I decide to go for the Lorraine? Well, in order to test this myth, I need to make sure that I in no way accidentally pen the weak side armor of the T28 prototype with my HE round. And the Lorraine's HE shells only have 30mm of penetration, which should in no way be able to pen the T28's prototype 132mm of side turret armor. And also the reason why you see this rare occurrence of me actually playing an artillery is because artillery on top of the already low HE penetration have a much lower chance of panning HE rounds bound to their vehicle class. So with all those factors combined the Lorraine 15550 should be the perfect vehicle that in no way will be able to pan the T28 side turret. But will still deliver a decent amount of splash damage in order to maybe trigger an explosion. 
And at last, to make my life a little easier, I trained Eagle Eye on my commander as well, so I can see for myself which T28 have their ammo rack already damaged. So with that all set up, we just happened to test it on Antelope as well. So just a coincidence, so no real reason for that. Nevertheless, let's now move on to the actual experiments. So once all gathered at the center of Al-Haloof, the T-28 and the other shooter tanks start shooting the ammo racks of the T-28s randomly, up until someone's ammo rack gets damaged. And once that happens, I came in and tried to blow it up with my HE round. But after shooting quite a bit of T-28 ammo racks on stream, and also even more T-28 ammo racks off stream, I didn't manage to explode a single one of them. While if I tried to blow up the T-28's ammo rack, with regular tanks shooting regular AP ammo, I could easily ammo rack roughly 7 out of 10 T28s without any major effort. So, conclusion, I think the test results are very clear since in total on and off stream combined I killed roughly 30 beforehand damaged T28 ammo rack without a single one blowing up. And since I don't have any struggle at all with ammo racking T28 prototypes on a regular basis, that already makes it quite safe to say that this myth is definitely Busted. Myth number four. Water reduces damage taken from artillery. So yeah, water still remains a strange thing in World of Tanks since in the previous episode we tested if water reduces a shell's penetration while the test actually proved that water seems to increase the shell's penetration, which is rather strange indeed. So will water also increase the artillery damage taken then? Well if it would, that would even prove more that water is truly a magical thing in the game. Because I guess in a real life scenario I think water might actually decrease the damage taken from high explosive shells. But I can't tell you guys for sure since I'm obviously not a physicist. So for the physicists among my lovely subscribers, if you know what would happen in real life, please let me know in the comments down below. But my guess is that water will decrease the damage since it slows down the fracture particles before hitting the tank. That's my best guess. So you guys just gotta do it with that for now. But what happens in real life is fun and all, but what would happen in World of Tanks? Well, let's find out. So to kick things off, probably the hardest part of this experiment was picking the right map, since we needed a space with both deep water and land right next to it. And on top of that, artillery needed to be able to hit that spot as well. So with these requirements in mind, we decided to go for the beach and airfield. Then for the tanks, we used the exact same setup as the spawn liner myth, which basically means a whole variety of tanks, but two of every variety. So for example, two Centurion Action 10s, two Mausers, and two Rheinmetall Panzerwagens, etc. Also, we made sure that each tank in the same pair was exactly identical, which means that they are fully upgraded and only have 100% crew and nothing else, to make the experiment as fair as possible. Also talking about fair, artillery and HE shells overall are incredibly sensitive to RNG, so keep that in mind as well. Then at last we used two T92s as the shooters, also with an identical loadout. So with that all set up, let's dive straight into the testing. So firstly, the experiment works as follows. Both tanks of a particular pair ready up at the beach. After my countdown, one pair of the tanks submerges its tank completely underwater, and once that is done, both artillery have 15 seconds to aim and take the shot before the submerged tank drowns. After that, we'll write down the damage taken for both the dry land and underwater party, and compare the results and the conclusion. So now you guys know how the experiment works, I'm just gonna play the footage and we'll see from there. So first up, the Centurion Action 10s, one of them on the beach, one of them in the water, and after a brief countdown, both artillery shoot and V1 on the beach loses 452 hit points, while the one on the water loses 601 hit points. So yet again, it looks like it's gonna turn out exactly the opposite as expected again. But before we draw any early conclusions, let's just move on to the next test. So next up is the Master Cern, again, one on the water, one on the beach. And after a few seconds, both T-92s shoot and the mouse on the water loses 360 damage, while the mouse on the beach loses 450 damage. So now it's the other way around again? Ah, very strange indeed. You know what, let's try it out with a more one-shot sensitive tank, with next up being the Rheinmetall Panzerwagens. So again, both RT shoot and the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen on the water loses 532 hit points, while the one on land loses a massive 1228 hit points. And this last result really triggered something inside my head, because what if water doesn't reduce the RT damage, but just prevents the RT HE round from penetrating? 
because if you think about it, HE shells explode on impact. But what if the impact with the water surface already sets off the HE explosion? So the tank that is beneath the surface only takes the splash damage that's raining down on them from the explosion that took place on top of the water surface. So to test this further out, I repeated the test with the Rheinmetall Panzerwagens over and over again, and the first couple of shots didn't really seem to pan the Panzerwagen on the water, but those were just poorly aimed. But at the third try, this happened. Yep, that's indeed a pan on the water, which was exactly the answer I was looking for. So, conclusion. No, there is no proof from the test footage whatsoever that water reduces artillery damage, since the damage taken from non-penetrating hits were literally all over the place, so that clearly just is a case of RNG, and also water does not eliminate the chance of getting panned by HE rounds, since as the test footage clearly showed, I was able to penetrate a Rheinmetall Panzerwagen that was fully on the water, and just because of that I can very safely say that this myth is busted. So guys, that was all for today's Mythbusters episodes. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please consider dropping a like, that would help out my channel a lot. Also, if you're new to my channel and you like my videos, make sure to smash that subscribe button so you will stay up to date with all my future content. And also, if you know any awesome myths that hasn't been tested out yet, feel free to drop it in the comment section down below or in the What Myths channel on my Discord server. Links in the description. And who knows, you might see your myth pop up in the next episode. But for now, I'm just going to say, as always, have an awesome day, and I'll catch you guys later. Jack it up.